Thanks for joining us, Troy. Um, why the decision? I know it was made with Dwayne, and uh, but uh, why deciding to go with a new head coach for this coming upcoming season, and hopefully for a few years after? Yeah. Good morning, uh, coach and ownership. Uh, sat down and talked about moving forward, and uh, coach had really taken this group and. Uh, as far as he could take them, uh, helping develop the young guys and setting the culture. And uh, we just decided it's, it's time for a new voice and uh, for Coach to move move up into the front office. So that's where we landed, and uh, now it's time to move forward and get a new coach and uh, pick the ball up and, and, and keep this thing going. Do you have a time frame uh, where you'd like to find a new coach by? And what are some of the characteristics? What are you looking for in the next coach of the Pistons? Yeah, no. Um, no timetable, uh, uh, John. But um, we're, we want to make sure uh, we land on the right guy. Uh, I said it yesterday. We want uh, discipline, uh, development. Uh, defense, um, but the the main thing that is going to be uh, leadership. Um, so no, we we'll vet that out and um, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, there won't be a rush on it. Does it make a difference if it's an experienced head coach or do you go for an assistant? And in, in that vein, it's always difficult, at least especially from our perspective, let alone yours. Um, determining which assistants will make good head coaches is in any sport. You really never know until they get that chance, right? No, you have to give them opportunity. Um, I remember, uh, you know, I hate to bring it up, but I remember people all up in arms about a, a certain assistant coach that the Redskins hired many years ago and um, Joe Gibbs and he turned out to be one of the best coaches ever. So, you never know until you get an opportunity, and uh, we'll vet these guys out and uh, excited about uh, the prospects. I agree with you in regards to leadership from a coach's perspective. Obviously, the leadership stems from ownership, and it flows through you to the coach and then ultimately to the players who are on the court. But at, just as a general question, how difficult is it for you to evaluate that component of of leadership and finding somebody that is going to provide that for your team? Uh, not that difficult. I mean, I was a coach. Uh, I know coaches. I study coaches. And I've been around this team. I, I know this team better than anyone. I know what this team needs. Um, it, it's a lot of fine coaches out there, but we want someone that wants to coach this team. And uh, I have a great idea. Uh, and a great feel for what this team needs. So uh, it won't be that difficult at all. What does this team need on the floor player-wise? Uh, you seem pretty set at ball handling guard with the uh, Ivy and Cade coming back healthy. Obviously, the you know, Durin, Wiseman, if he comes back, you have guys there. Uh, what's your biggest need? Is it the, the wing who can, you know, stretch the floor and maybe play some uh, better three-point defense than we've had before? Uh, yeah, that'll be something we look at, but we just want to get healthy, build our defense, um, and start from there. Um, but, yeah, we we like to add another wing defender. Uh, we like our guys up front. We like the backcourt. Uh, I mean, Bogdanovich, uh, he had a tremendous year for us. He can, you know, he can shoot the ball. Uh, Livers is a, uh, another 3 and D guy. So, no, we, 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 we like our guys. We like to add another guy. Uh, on the wing that could help um, some more experience, but uh, I like the group. We just we, we just need to get healthy. We need to get cohesive, um, but we need to set our defense, and uh, that's what we look to do. Uh, you guys at the trade deadline added uh, James Wiseman. Uh, I'd love to get your take on what you saw from him in that last part of the season. Yeah, I mean, just him getting out on the floor. Uh, he essentially uh, just completed his rookie year. Uh, he, when we traded for him, he had played in the same amount of games that 
Jalen Dern had played in he, he not not even quite as many minutes. So just him getting on the floor again and uh, getting comfortable on the floor, feeling his way through, but he's a tremendous talent. Uh, he's shown uh, flashes. He's long. He's athletic. He can score the ball, can rebound, but uh, just getting his feet on them again. Uh, he didn't really play much at Golden State because of injuries and um, the team they had there. So uh, excited about uh, what he brings to the table moving forward. Troy Weaver joins us on the Stoney and Jansen program. Fans always ask, and they say, you got Bagley, you got Beef Stew, Wiseman, Duran. A lot of big guys uh, in the way the league goes these days. I know I remember when you uh, acquired Wiseman, we talked about uh, – the East and, you know, the size of some of those guys. Are you comfortable with returning four big guys for next year? Absolutely. Uh, pro sports is all about depth. And we never had all four of those guys together this season. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. But it's all about depth. Uh, guys go down all, all the time. And so uh, just like in the backcourt, uh, just like anywhere else, we want to build our team with depth uh, and defense. Um, so, no, um, having four big guys, yes, it, is, it can be see, perceived as too many, but it's really not. Uh, long season, injuries happen, uh, things happen. So, no, I'm looking forward to, to all four guys. Obviously, healthy. The, the lottery luck. Um, we talk about that a lot in, in, in both hockey and now in, in basketball and you had it with Cade Cunningham and it feels like you guys did a great job, even though you didn't get lottery luck last year with Ivy and Duran, how much of the development and the future of this team rests on lottery luck. And if you don't get that luck with getting one or even two overall, What's the plan in place to make this team go from where you are now to contending in, in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, we, we have free agency. Uh, we have some money to spend there, but we feel like uh, we'll get a good player. Yeah, there's a lot of good players in this draft that we like. Um, so, no, we're, we're excited about um, wherever the ball lands. Like you just stated, I would take uh, Duran and Ivy over anyone that was drafted last year. So I feel good about that. And so where where we land, we we, we landed. Uh, I said it from the beginning. Doesn't matter where you bat in the lineup, you have to hit the ball. So we need to make sure that uh, we're ready to hit the ball wherever the ball lands. Um, have our free agency to get a new coach in here, and uh, we'll we'll be fine. We uh, we're excited about moving forward. I know the record doesn't uh, lend to that a lot, but like I stated earlier, the process is not linear, but we expect um, to really take a step forward next season. Uh, Ivy certainly got better, especially the last you know six weeks of the season. Duran, his ability speaks for itself. How confident are you that Ivy and, and Cade, and if you even get somebody else in there, can all work together? Yeah, very confident. Um, I think both guys um, have shown um, who they are as players. Uh, Great players and and talented players, they figured out um, the ball handling duties, playing with each other, playing off their strengths and weaknesses. Um, Now, excited about uh, what their back coach can do in the future, but... um, you know, the goal is to have as many guys that can make great decisions as, as you can get on the team, and and uh, those two are headed in the right direction. We read, you can call it a letter or a statement, um, but you, you made that statement to the fans. Why did you feel it important at this time to connect with the fans in that way? Yeah, uh, my first two years here, you know, coming out of COVID and, and trying to set the tone, I thought – this year we were poised to, to, to take a step forward, and, and we didn't, um, you know, for whatever reason, no excuses. Um, and so I just wanted to let the fan base know, hey, we're disappointed just like you are, uh, but we're going to keep at this thing and um, 
maximize the situation we're in right now and uh, come back and, and swing this thing again. But we're disappointed in the season without a doubt. Uh, but we're going to put our hard hat and boots on and, and, and get back at it. And uh, just want the fans to know that we appreciate the support. Um, but we're going to get this thing right. When I was a question about the league a little bit, when you see what happened with, with, with Dallas, yeah. uh, what's your take on that where they basically, they had a chance to make the playoffs and decide to sit out some guys I and mean, load management's always been criticized. Uh, what's your stand on that? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. Um, on the process with what happened down in Dallas, um, Low management, um, yeah, I mean, people have different theories on that. Um, I, I just want the guys to be healthy to get out there and play. Um, so if, if our guys are healthy, they'll get out there and compete uh, every night. We have a group of guys that want to compete every night. But, um, <clears throat> you know, with the schedule, um, I, I just think the players um, – Sometimes want to make sure they manage so they can get through the season. <clears throat> I see that the, the league has put in different <clears throat> uh, amendments to CBA now and having to play 65 games to qualify for different awards. So we'll see what that looks like going forward. Uh, the Lions pick at 18. Uh, obviously, the Commanders. And six. Uh, it was six, but yeah, but the, the Commanders are on the clock at 16, <laughs> right before the Lions. Uh, if you are the GM of Martin the Mayhew, Commanders, right? uh, who are you selecting in this year's NFL draft? Whew. We got a couple needs, um, especially on defense. I think in free agency, we, we, we went and got some offensive linemen. I hope you approve those guys. Oh, yeah. But. <laughs> Um, I, I'm thinking linebacker or or D back uh, for the Commanders. All right. So there's a, there's a corner off the board. Um, <laughs> just want to know what uh, what we're looking at at uh, at 18. Who's left on the board? <laughs> hey, who do you, who do you like That'd to win the who do you like to win the NBA championship right now? Is it going to stay in the East? Uh, Dwayne Casey told me Milwaukee or Boston. Do you, you agree with the coach? Yeah, I picked Milwaukee a couple years ago. Yes. They won it. Yeah, um, on our show, yes, if I remember correctly. Um, if Milwaukee's healthy, I go Milwaukee. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I go Milwaukee if they're healthy. Phoenix, uh, I'm picking Phoenix Milwaukee final. Oh, wow. <clears throat> the way if Durant stays healthy, that's gonna that would be an unbelievable <clears throat> series, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, that'd be fun. All right, Troy. Fun is a word we hope we get back with uh, in the in the restoration. Good luck in the coaching search, and uh, we'll talk to you around draft time, lottery time, and all the good stuff. We appreciate it as always. No, thanks for having me, guys. All right, uh, Troy Weaver, general manager of Detroit Pistons, Stony Jansen, ninety-seven-one, the ticket.